Um, that's not to say that any of these characters can't be good just based on look alone, but I just thought from, from a looks perspective, uh, it was really interesting who was sitting at the top. Akuma strikes me as a character who will always kind of be up there. Chun Li, same thing. She's the first lady of Capcom. Not surprising here. Um, but if you look across this, this chart, something could potentially jump out at you that jumped out at me. And the first thing that I saw after looking at Ed and going, oh yeah, you know, this hasn't changed at all. Um, the first thing that I saw was that um, Cammy has come down a little bit, Chun-Li to take her place, but Lily is sitting up here. And so if we zoom in, um, and I know you can't see this from where you are, but just again, um, where it is, Lily is sitting at, let's see, one, so Ed, two, three, four, five, six. So fifth place, technically from the top. Or fourth from the top, if you exclude Ed. This is really strange because Lily still gets put in a, a category amongst, I think, really Western players as not necessarily being the greatest character to have ever been introduced into Street Fighter. And if we look at the resemblance between her kit, Nikali's kit, and T-Hawk's kit, you kind of get a different feeling with this character that does not necessarily match or resemble uh, the other grapplers. However, Lily strikes me as a, and something that, something that I've deemed it to be, and I haven't really heard anybody else say this, I believe Lily is in a lot of ways the mobile version of Zongief. Okay, so Zongief has a a kit that's designed to force you to guess, force you to block, and then once you're blocking more, you have to guess between strike and throw. Um, and doesn't have a whole lot of Oki, and I think Oki is probably the main thing that made Zongief good in Street Fighter V because he could dash up SPD after a heavy landing, a heavy SPD if he got in. He was rewarded for getting in, and so in this game, they took away that constant loop of dash up Oki and forcing you to guess 50-50, but in my opinion, even though Lily has a chore, Lily actually kind of has a kit that's very similar to Street Fighter V Geef, so what they've done is, again, they've taken a character and um, made them feminine, so they've, they've given Lily um, grappler traits but made her, you know, female, and then they've said, okay... Um, how about we make this character, we can't overtune her, but how about we make her a little bit cute, but she's going to have the same toolkit as Nikali or T-Hawk. And I say Nikali because Nikali's kit was essentially taken from Omega mode T-Hawk. Um, and that's a long story in and of itself. And we could talk about that another day. So this character seems to almost have an even win rate across the board. Everything is at least at 49%. And her lowest win rate would be Dalsum, and we don't see a lot of Dalsum players in general. So this is actually a very good character to pick up at the moment. As of the 17th of the 10th, 2024, and Terry is out, Lily is currently a very strong pick in the meta. Okay, and when I say the meta, I mean the characters that are good right now can struggle with Lily. So for example, Ed has a fireball and horizontal screen control. Lily has a way to get through that. Akuma, same thing, horizontal screen control, Air Fireball, Lily has a way to get through that. Although her, her DP isn't a traditional DP in that you use it from or as an invincible reversal, it's still very good as an anti-air. And she also has Stan Heavy Punch. Um, Rashid, same thing. He has a Fireball, Lily can get through that. And uh, ultimately, Chun-Li, the exact same thing. So Chun-Li has a Fireball, Lily has a way to get through that with Condor Spire. So Condor Spire, unless they nerf it, will continue to be one of, if not the best move in Street Fighter 6 right now. And so uh, from this stage, a lot of the characters that are really strong in the neutral or very strong after they get in, right? So Dalsum, very strong in the neutral um, and strong when he gets in, but also he can play a little bit of both. You know, he's sort of a hybrid zoner this time around. Lily does quite well against them, albeit Dalsum being her worst matchup. So that, that's sitting around 40%, which is still really good. So the only characters that Lily is actually losing to consistently are characters with a very, very solid rushdown. So that's Kimberly and Terry, or she's losing to um, characters that can keep her out really effectively, um, like Dalsum. Okay. Her win rate's a little bit lower with Rashid, but again, he's a rushdown character and that's to be expected. 
anybody else with a DP and or a very good way to keep Lily at bay. So that's like Luke has a good DP. Um, Bison can kind of lame Lily out when she jumps in and he has a way to get through Condor Spire, um, even though that's very hard to react to. Same thing with Ed and Akuma. They both have very good fireballs, so they can stop her from getting those um, those wind stocks, but at the same time, um, Lily has a way to get through all of those fireballs and, you know, the horizontal force you to jump type tools by just using Condor Spire. I haven't yet spent any time with this character in a elongated period of time with this character because Zangief is my main. I'm, I am a character loyalist, even though I try to make out like I'm not. It's been Zangief since Street Fighter 4 for me, and I, I, I was sort of barely into the game then, didn't really know how to study. Um, same thing in Street Fighter V. I kind of got into it and taught myself how to play the game, didn't really have any resources or anything like that when the game first came out. It has changed a little bit, and Street Fighter VI is here. We've pretty much exclusively just played Zangief, and we've taken a break from those characters to learn other characters that could be problematic for Geef. So, for example, we've learned Balsam, we've learned JP. I've spent a little bit of time with... Um, and Bison, when he came out, in addition to spending some time with uh, Terry Bogard. And so, as it stands right now, I believe Lily actually could be a really good choice for a secondary character who solves a lot of Zangief's problems. If you think about what Geef struggles with in this game, Lily has a lot of ways around that. The problem is a lot of people don't like Lily, I think, probably aesthetically. She's a cute character, quote unquote cute, but she is not designed like the type of character that most people identify with, right? Um, Geef being, uh, you know, kind of, uh, you know, quite a large guy, big muscles, you know, a funny accent at times, um, you know, a little bit quirky and an exciting character to me. Whereas when I look at Lily, I don't necessarily think the exact same thoughts, but she is a very good grappler. We watched El Chicote win Combo Breaker with this character. There are quite a few very notable Japanese players who are putting Lily on the, on the map as well at the moment. So I think if you can find yourself able to dismiss just the aesthetic part of the character and you can get behind what she actually does, um, I think Lily could be a very, very, very strong pick right now as a secondary if you are playing a character like Geef and you like to go to tournaments and, you know, you might struggle a little bit with, uh, you know, specific characters like JP, uh, you know, uh, characters like that, you might actually do pretty well by picking Lily up, uh, being that the concepts are slightly different. You get the knockdown, you get a dash, and then you force your opponent to guess, you know, strike or throw. Right now in this game, strike and throw is extremely strong because we have concepts and things like throw loops okay so cami has a very good throw loop chun li actually doesn't have a real throw loop um, but it can feel like that at times so throws in this game in my opinion and command grabs are actually very very good and i think there's a reason why all of the characters that have a solid command grab have been kind of standing out recently okay so um we only recently saw zongief drop a little bit because of the fact that um, they changed his toolkit a little bit and they will probably do the exact same thing. So at, like I said before, as of the 17th, the 10th right now, Geef has had a small nerf, but I believe there are more coming. They don't really want Geef to be as dominant. Itabashi Zangief as of today, uh, I think a few days ago, uh, or as of this video, Itabashi Zangief has taken um, a major with Geef. Kobayan has been doing exceptionally well in Japan as well uh, with Zongief. Um, the West doesn't really do that well with this character at the moment, and they're not really winning majors like that. However, um, Japan is still turning out amazing Zongief players, and usually Capcom balances this game based on uh, Japanese players. So I think going into the future, command grabs will still continue to be exceptionally strong because of the fact that the the corner is very strong strike throw is very strong you have throw mix up so you have to guess four ways now strike block throw and then command grab essentially you have to guess pretty much between uh, all of those with any character like manon like geef like lily um even jp as well jp also has a command grab 
and still does quite well in a lot of matchups. So um, again, this is from 1800 up, right? So if you're playing below this level, it may not matter so much where you are, but just know that there are stronger picks um, than there are stronger picks and there are weaker picks. And right now, um, Ed and Akuma and Chun Li and Kami and Rashid and Lily are all very strong picks at the moment. I'm a little bit surprised to see Rashid as low as he is based on the way people talk about this character. And a lot of people have been pushing for uh, Rashid nerfs in the last patch. We actually saw, um, we actually saw Rashid cop a nerf quite early on um, with his level two. And it, albeit it's still exceptionally good, but we still see Rashid kind of steamrolling a lot of characters just based on design alone. So as good as people say he is sitting up at A tier, um, and he's sitting at around about 50.91% win rate, I'm surprised that um, he is not necessarily doing better in terms of uh, the 1800 plus MR rating. So... Anyway, that's all I really have to say about this. Um, please leave me your comments um, down below. Let me know what you guys think about this matchup table. Cat Cami puts out some very good data. So once again, big ups to Cat Cami. I am going to spend some time with Lily. I think before we get my Shiranui coming out in, I think she comes out towards the end of the year. We're going to spend some time with Lily and actually learn how this character functions, learn her normals, you know, that kind of thing. Um, being that she's so strong, until they change her, it doesn't make sense for us to not learn uh, a, a solid grappler. So here's to hoping that 2025 they announce Alex, Makoto, Hugo, Relento, one of those characters. Alex will probably definitely be in the game. I'm thinking Cody will be next season as well. Um, and I, we may not get Hugo until 2026, uh, which will be around about the time the Grand Theft Auto uh, comes out which will be probably a bad idea. So they're going to need to do things based on that release date, by the way, to make sure that people come back to the game. So I could see Sakura, I could see Balrog, I could see Alex or Hugo around that time. Um, and I think they are strategically holding on to drops in this game to make sure that when big titles like Grand Theft Auto 6 come out, um, are, are, uh, they are... So when we have big titles like that come out, they are prepped and ready to go with characters that can help kind of keep people playing fighting games because that's a very hard game to compete with. So uh, anyway, that's all for now. Thank you guys very much for watching.